Hello, welcome to Scratch 3D Printing. In this video, I would like to take a closer look at the Q1 Pro as I have spent more time with the Q1 Pro and see how this machine keeps up with other machines. Let's scratch to this topic. So if you haven't seen yet, I will leave a link up here or in the description down below so you can go and check the video where I unbox Chidi Q1 Pro and set it up, do some printing and all of that stuff. But in this video, I would just like to talk more about the Q1 Pro from Chidi Tech. There are a couple of features that I like to point out on this 3D printer. So first, let's get into what kind of filaments the Q1 Pro can print. So this Q1 Pro, I have been printing many filaments on it, ranging from PLA, PLA Plus, PLA Matte, Hyperspeed PLA, it prints great PTG, PTG carbon fiber, ASA, PP, it works on PP, you just gotta have a really big brim and turn off the bed to a quite high temperature like 90 or 100C. I recently just got nylon filament because I want to try it out and nylon is actually pretty cool. It's stretchy but it's very durable. It can print that also but it is a little bit more difficult to print with those types of material because they are just generally harder to print than common filament like PLA or PDG. There are a few cons about this Chidi Tech Q1 Pro here and those things are quite annoying to me. So now we know that what types of filament this machine can do. Let's go into print quality. The first couple of weeks I got this 3D printer it turns out really nice. After that the print quality for what reason? It kind of slowed down a bit or the quality is a little bit worse than the first couple of weeks that I got the 3D printer. How or why? I don't know. I just use it all the time and printing quality got worse a little bit. But it's still printing really good. So this part right here was printed on the Q1 Pro. Well, you might wonder what this is. This is going to be a very big project coming in the future. So if you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel because it's going to be amazing. And it has to do with my car. Maybe you saw in my way, way previous video, I made some custom muff flap for my WRX. And this is going to be something for it too so stay tuned but that is besides the point the reason why i want to show you this piece is right here this corner right here is supposed to be straight so imagine there's like yeah right there that part is missing i don't know this thing was printed like this on the q1 pro everything printed really nicely but as you can see here there are some like bad layer shifting edge like that that's why i say the print quality got worse a little bit when i first got a 3d printer it doesn't really have all these like layer line shift or something like that that's not layer shift but the the layer line is not stacking really nicely now and for whatever reason i tried printing a couple of pieces of this and this is always the result for whatever reason, when it gets to the very tippy top here, it under extrude a lot. And you might say that, uh, just increase the flow rate or something like that. I don't really think that's the problem because if that's the problem, then the bottom portion here is going to be under extrude. But it's just this teeny tiny piece up here. I tried printing a different piece with similar heights and every single time it gets to the tippy top here, it just print like this. I don't know why it does that. It's like under extrude so it's like very easy to push off and i just push it off it's supposed to be sharper here but i don't know it just keep printing like that the print quality actually went down but by all means it still print really nicely it's just those two things that just kind of annoying to me because if this is gonna happen i want it to happen down here so that i can stop the print like one hour in instead of printing everything and then the last part just got ruined and another thing that i found quite annoying with this 3d print is you can't really edit the start G code. I tried editing it. I tried removing the bed leveling phase because that takes a lot of time. And every single time it does that, I look at the bed mesh. It's very similar or almost the same as the one that is, is the full bed mesh. So I really want to get rid of that. Like how I did on the K1 Max. I got rid of the bed leveling and then just started to print automatically. After it does the nozzle wipe, probe, the home position, then print. I don't want to do the bed calibration or like all the time that takes a lot of time if you do like a bigger print it's it usually takes about one to two minutes just to do the bed leveling and i don't like that i want to get rid of it but i can't because if i get rid of it it homes or it does the auto bed leveling sensor it doesn't touch the build plate the the build plate goes up like this and then down like this and then down and then when it print it prints in mid air I showed this and covered this in my unbox video so you can go and watch that if you want to see that part but in this video I'm just gonna talk but when it actually does the bed leveling it touch the bed if you get rid of that it doesn't touch the bed so it doesn't know where the bed is so it just print in mid air if it actually does the bed leveling and actually touch the bed it prints really nicely for the first layer and for the rest of the layer 
except the very tippy top. So it's not like fully, fully customizable. And it's not like fully open source. It is fully open source, but when you edit it, it kind of ruined the print. So it's not like fully customizable. Maybe I just did something wrong. I don't know, but it is what it is. I'm just gonna say I don't like this part of the 3D printer. I don't really mind it, but I feel like it's just not that good. What is it? It's the loading and filament. Every single time you want to load filament, you need to take out the boiling tube and pull it backward, cut the filament, pull out the filament, extrude the rest of the filament through the nozzle, and then load a new filament. It is just annoying. You need to take the top off, do all of that, and it's just way too much work. And that's not even the worst part. The worst part is this Q1 Pro loves to clog. <laughs> I don't know what it is with the Q1 Pro, but I got like over 15 clogs with the Q1 Pro here. I don't know if it's my fault or the printer's fault, but okay, here's the story. Every single time I do a print and then do another print and I just keep printing, it does not clog. Even if I print and then let the machine idle to room temperature and do another print, it doesn't clog. But here's where it clogs. Every single time I do one print, shut off the machine just don't use the machine for 12 hours to 24 hours and i come back and print something in it it clogs every single time i don't know why that keeps happening it happens to pla ptg and even nylon i don't know why that happens i tried asa and that actually happened too i don't know if it's just my unit or it just this thing all the time if you have a q1 pro let me know in the comments down below does that happen to you or I guess it's just me. And if that happened, I tried using the unclogged sticks. Push it through the filament guy, it doesn't work. It's like the piece that's stuck in the extruder is like fully stuck in there. So what do I need to do? Well, you know what it is. I gotta take off all the screw, take apart the extruder, try and push that filament that is stuck in the extruder out, and then reassemble it. Within a month, I gotta unclog this thing 15 times plus, and take off the extruder like eight times or nine times i don't even know how much time i took off the extruder i know the extruder at the back of my mind now <laughs> it's that crazy well all of that is the baddish part the good part about this 3d printer is that i love how quiet this thing is it's not completely silent it's it's a lot quieter than the k1 max the auxiliary fan all the motors the cooling fan and all of that part it's actually quiet. Even when I print 300 millimeters per second, full blast everything 100%, it is still quite quiet or quieter than the K1 Max. It is actually a little bit quieter than the Ender 3V3 over here too because the Ender 3V3, the fan is loud and the most loud is the moving part. Like zoom, 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 zoom. It's like so crazy loud. But the Q1 Pro is actually quite quiet. The motors move very smoothly, the bed moves smoothly, the nozzle head moves smoothly. All the fans are quiet and very strong and I love that about this 3D printer. I also like that it has an active heated chamber in there so you can heat up the chamber to a temperature and it stays there quite hot. It is actually quite hot. Every single time I use my Q1 Pro, my room gets heated up and I was like, why is my room so hot? I was like, oh, my Q1 Pro is running with the active heated chamber <laughs> and that is nice if you want to print abs or other filament that is prone to warping that is nice keeping the chamber warm the back to a really nice temperature that prevents warping and actually gives you a really nice finish of the print and that leads to i also like that it is fully enclosed the front panel the top panel it is fully enclosed i tried to find gaps and like can i find gaps it's like very teeny tiny i think it's only like one millimeter gap ish throughout the whole thing but that is still very nice it's fully enclosed it prints very nicely okay now let's go back to the bad thing because i'm not that organized so you just need to keep up with me and stuff like that the size of this thing is quite big i actually measured this compared to the k1 max the width and the length is actually a little bit bigger than the k1 max but the height is shorter than the k1 max because the k1 max is 300 by 300 by 300 and this is 250 by 250 by 250 or 245 i forgot yeah consider it's only 250 by 250 and the k1 max is 300 by 300 and they are the same size but the bed is a lot smaller it just comes to show that the construction of this 3d printer was not 
the best because there are like very very hollow spot in this 3d printer but i guess that is okay not the worst not the best but yeah it's very chunky but you get a smaller build plate and one last thing that i want to talk about is the screen oh i don't like the screen at all the ui i don't like it the screen placement is fine but i just don't like the interaction the software or the ui of the screen it just the worst. Why? Because before I got the K1 Max and the M3 V3, I was fine with the screen on my CR6SE. The screen was fine. And what about it? When you print something, the screen displays what you're printing. It displays the pause button, the stop button, the temperature, the fan control, and all of that stuff. It's very nice. So why do I hate it? Well, because most of the time the screen doesn't work. When I send prints from Orca Slicer, to the Q1 Pro, it works, but the screen does not detect it. It says that it failed to load. It could not send it, but it started printing. I was like, how can you not detect that, but you're printing it? That's one of the bad part. Another one is that there's a message that prompts every single time you print. I think it tells you to take the top off and open the door when you're printing PLA or PDG. There's two buttons. One is OK. The other button is like, don't show this again. I press the don't show this again, and it keeps showing. It doesn't even work. It doesn't even save it. It doesn't work. But the worst part about the screen UI is before I got the Cable Max screen UI, I was fine with it. But now I don't like it all because, like I said, the screen shows the model you're printing, the control, and all of that. But you cannot navigate to setting. You cannot navigate to Wi-Fi connection. You cannot navigate to anything at all. You are stuck with the printed model. Unlike the K1 Max, I keep referring to it because that's the printer that I got and I just want to compare to. When you are printing on the K1 Max screen UI, you see the model, the temperatures, stop, pause, and stuff like that. You can still also access to all the settings. You can go to setting, you can go to about printer, you can get your printer's IP address, you can see your Wi-Fi connection, you can go to PID tooling, but you cannot do it because the printer is printing something. But you can still access all the thing in the UI interface. You can access anything, but there are some features that you cannot use because your 3D printer is printing and I love that. Why? Because let's say you are using Orca Slicer and you start printing on your 3D printer. Well, now you want to connect your printer to Orca Slicer and you can't because you cannot access to the IP address. But on the K1 Max screen, you can. You can still go to setting. You can still go to everything. You can see all of the things. You can see the firmware that you are on. Just so much freedom right there. The Q1 Pro, they locked you into that teeny tiny screen and you cannot access anything. Let's say you do like a 30 hour print. You want to connect it to um, Orca Slicer like five hours later. You can't, you gotta wait until it's done printing or you just gotta stop it. And yeah, that might be small stuff here and there, but that freedom of moving to any setting you want in the screen eye, it's like a very plus for me and I love that. Also another thing, for this Key One Pro is the wiping at the back. It does a okay job. It's not like 100% nice. I think it's about 50-50% chance. Sometimes it extrudes the filament drops into the bucket, right? And then it wipes, 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 all of that stuff. And sometimes it's clean. All the times it extrudes, it could not go into the box. It wipes, it comes back. There's still like so many filaments stuck there and you gotta manually wipe it with a towel or something like that. It's good that it has it. It's bad that it's not working properly how it should. Well, that is basically what this video of me ranting about the K1 Pro is just all the stuff that I like about it and some of the stuff that I don't like about it. And yeah, that is it with this video of me doing another review or taking a look more in depth with the Q1 Pro with days of printing using this 3D printer. And that is all of the things I have to say with the Q1 Pro. It's a really good printer. But if they could just fix the screen UI to make it look better and they can also just redo the extruder so that it has a latch where you can engage and disengage the extruder of the filament that would be so much better but other than that this 3d printing is really nice i'll leave a link down below if you are interested in this 3d printer and everything will be linked down below it's like always but yeah that is it with this video and as always keep on 3d printing